Welcome to 6x6 Professional Development. Six slides in six minutes, excluding, might I add, opening and closing slides. Hey, it's hard to train on a topic with just four slides. My name is Rodney Cook, and I'm a Special Education Compliance Consultant for the Region 8 RPDC, which is six counties in the eastern part of Missouri in and around the St. Louis metropolitan area. I also represent the cooperating school districts, which serve as school districts across the state with professional development, cooperative purchasing, and other services. If after this webinar you need to contact me, please feel free to do so via email to rcook at csd.org or by phone at 314-692-1239. Today's topic is writing SMART goals for individualized education plans. The information provided today will be based on the Missouri Standards and Indicators and to a lesser extent the federal regulations for IDEA. In the Missouri Standards and Indicators we will be looking at Indicator 200.810, a statement of measurable annual goals including academic and functional goals based on the federal reg of 300.320A2AB-SP4. This can be found on page 23 of the Missouri Standards and Indicators, updated October 2012. This page may change as some updates are added to the Standards and Indicators this year, though. From the Federal Department of Education, an IEP must include a statement of measurable annual goals, including academic and functional goals, designed to meet the child's needs that result from the child's disability to enable the child to be involved in and make progress in the general education curriculum and also meet the child's other educational needs that result from the child's disability. As we examine 200.810, we are going to focus on sub-indicators 21810A to B, Part 5. Other important information exists in this indicator that is directly tied to the federal regulations and guidance provided by the Federal Department of Education, but we will not be exploring that directly today. The other indicators are important though, so please examine them as well when you have an opportunity. If you have been involved with special education from another state, you may find that other states do not use the SMART format, although it is widely accepted as a best practice for goal writing. In Missouri, however, not using the SMART format may result in being out of compliance if documents were reviewed by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Office of Special Education. S-M-A-R-T stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Results-Oriented, and Time-Bound. Specific means a particular skill or behavior, and it is based on the student's present level of academic achievement and functional performance. Keeping in mind that goals drive the specialized instruction, this can be the most difficult part of the goal, as students have many needs, and sometimes as educators we want to address as many areas of concern as possible. Nevertheless, planning with the end in mind, specific means just that, a singular, specific skill or behavior that after the receipt of specialized instruction, the student can demonstrate consistently. Measurable means the indication of a level attainment, and that progress can be objectively determined at frequent data points, including their criterion and conditions of performing the skill. Which leads us to achievable. This means the goal should represent what is realistic, related to the most critical needs, and can be accomplished by the end of a 365-day period. Most schools, if not all, are not open 365 days a year. So schools may want, want to see how many actual weeks of instruction actually occur before making determinations about what is achievable. Many IEP teams, related to the comments on measurable, have been found to set levels of achievement that are unrealistic. So make sure the attainment levels are based on data. Results-oriented means that the goal should have specific outcome in mind based on data and linked to the present level. Time-bound refers to the date that the IEP team believes that the goal will be met. I always encourage educators and some IEP team members, such as parents, to plan with the end in mind. I think it is best that persons consider how many weeks of instruction actually exist and include the total number of weeks in the goal. For example, an average number of instructional weeks may be 36. Getting started on writing goals can be difficult. Here is a writing prompt that may be helpful. On the left-hand side, we have who, 
behavior, criterion, conditions, and time frame. And then on the right, we have the student will do what, to what level or degree, under what conditions, and in what length of time. So let's start with who, the student. Let's say it's Johnny. And then let's look at behavior or skill. Will do what, complete a request. And then criterion, referring to measurable, to what level of degree, with no more than two prompts per request. And then conditions, referring to achievable, under what conditions, giving orally, has no more than three steps. And then time frame, referring to time bound, and what length of time, by the end of 36 weeks of instruction. So, our goal would be, Johnny will complete a request given orally that has no more than three steps with two or fewer prompts per request by the end of 36 weeks of instruction. Notice the S M A R T. Here is another example of a SMART goal. Notice in this goal, though, that I've included a reference to the Common Core State Standards. This reference is not mandated, but if you're writing standards-based goals, or if it's something you would like to do as a different format, that is permissible. However, it is not required. The goal is that Samantha will determine the meaning of figurative phrases used in grade level text with 60% accuracy by the end of the IEP cycle. Writing goals using the SMART format can aid IEP teams in developing IEPs and services that help students address their most significant needs. While the present level may be the heart of the IEP, goals are like the eyes with the vision of the direction the IEP is headed. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Again, I can be reached at rcook at csd.org or via phone at 314-692-1239. If you, are in, if you are in Missouri, as I stutter through the end, or a member of CSD and would like on-site PD or TA regarding goal writing or other compliance related issues, do not hesitate to contact me. If you're outside of Missouri and or not a member of CSD, I am more than willing to make a recommendation for persons or agencies that can provide assistance. Thank you.